Nice to see all of you here. Hi. My name is my name is Rick, and uh, Stacy and uh, Heather are also going to uh, be helping us today, along with uh, Tarika. All right, and uh, I work here at EIU, and uh, both um, Heather and Stacy are students, uh, um, going to be teachers at some point. And I'm not sure about Tarika. Uh, I'm um, a sophomore, and I'm majoring in elementary education. All right. Okay. And we have Brian helping out as well. All right, so we're going to talk about some robots for work and play. Some of you might know some of these things. Some of you uh, might learn some things. And uh, so I'm going to, we're going to talk a little bit first, and then uh, we have some different robots to play um, throughout the room. So we'll have a few minutes. We won't have, each of you won't have a chance to um, play with each of those, but we'll each have a chance to play with at least one of them. So. Question. That's a smart board. We have those at home. It is. Yes, it is. But I'm not using all of its smart capabilities today. I'm just using it as a projection screen. So, so what is a robot is a question that we might think about. What robots come to mind? Any robots come to mind? What's one example of a robot? Um, well, maybe like a human-like. Yeah, some robots are human-like. And I heard somebody over here say, what did you say? Or, What's another example? I'm looking at you. I don't know your name. Yeah. Or either. Well, sorry. Okay. Is that a robot? All right. I don't know all of them in the back. Robots that are like used in factories. Yeah. There's robots in factories. That's good for. They're they're good for work. One more example here. Okay. Our entertainment type things. There's lots of other examples that we might come up with, but we might think about what makes those a robot. Why are they robots and the table isn't a robot? Different things like that. So sometimes we think of four things. One being they're autonomous, meaning that they're independent. They do things on their own. They don't need any help. Secondly is that they have a brain, but the brain is a computer, computer brain. And so the third thing that we think about with robots is that they have sensors. So like we have senses. And so it's sort of like they're human-like in that sense and that they have sensors and they can sense the surroundings and they can do stuff. They, can, they have muscles in a sense. They can make some movement, make some different things. So talk at your tables here for just a moment. Is this picture of a remote control car, is that an example of a robot? Yeah. Decide at your table, is it an example of a robot or not? All right, let's do a quick poll here. How many say yes? This could be an example of a robot. How many say no, it's not an example? Well, we're kind of split. Some of you aren't voting today. One thing is that a remote control is controlled by a human. Typically, when we think of a robot, it's not controlled by a human, but it's going to be autonomous. It's going to be independent. It does things. Once we press go, it does its own thing. Um, so in that case, remote control cars aren't a robot. What about this little wind-up thing? Talk at your table here for a minute. Is this an example of a robot or not? What? It works on its own, doesn't it? So it's autonomous. What about the other three features? No, it doesn't have one. Remember those? No. What do we think? Yes or no? How many say yes, it's a robot? So this one is autonomous, right? All right. How many say no? Some of you say no. Why not? What's one? Shut it up. Just. No brain. Yeah, there's no computer in here. This one is just controlled by the wind-up mechanism, and so it's not controlled by a computer. So that's another feature. What about this? Washing machine. Is that, talk at your table here for a minute. Is this a robot or not? All right, let's do a quick poll here. How many say yes, this might be a robot? How many say no, this can't be a robot? Kind of split. Let's go through those four things that we talked about a moment ago. <coughs> is it autonomous? Once you press go, does the washing machine do its own thing? Yeah. yeah, it does, right? You don't have to go and add water. It adds the water. Is it controlled by a computer? Yes. Yeah. I've never looked at it, but I, my understanding is that there's a little computer inside. And actually, my cousin works for a company, and she's one that helps design those computers. And so it doesn't look like the computer that I'm using here, but yes, it is a computer inside, so it's controlled by a computer. What's the third thing that we had on the list from before? Sensors? Are there any sensors? What's one example of a sensor on a washing machine? Balance. Balance, okay, some of them have a balance sensor. What else? Like what types of, like the amount of clothes that you 
Washing? Yeah, somebody told me that their their uh, washer has a they can weigh the clothes and they know how much the weight is in the clothes. So there's some sort of a weight sensor. And then one more type of sensor. Yeah, so it's all programmed to do those things. And what happens if it's on the step where it's putting or spinning the clothes and you open the door? It stops. So there's that sensor also that it, and it, um, so it has sensors and does it do something? Does it achieve a goal? Does it wash your clothes? Yeah, it certainly does. So could we call this a robot? Yeah, we could call it a robot. So this is one type of robot that you might have at home that you maybe didn't think of as a robot. It certainly doesn't look like a human, but it has the same features of other machines um, that have that have robots, I mean that other features of, of robots. So typically we have robots to do th things that are dangerous, things that are dirty, things that are dull. You probably would find it dull to wash your clothes, so you have a machine for that. And there's several other machines that do work for us as well. Have you seen a picture like this before? Yeah. This is a picture of a Mars rover. And what type of sensors do you think this robot might need? What do you think? Probably a camera, and I think this might be the camera. I'm not sure. Okay. What else might this have? It would need to like, have a sense that if it was an aerosol, it might have like, a tube that tests the air if it's breathable or not. Okay. All right. So different things in the, in the atmosphere around. And I think also for scientific purposes, there are uh, sensors for measuring temperature and things like that. Another example of a sensor this might have? Seth, is it? Okay, it can sense when the bad weather is coming. There's lots of other things that might. One more thing, comment on this one. Yeah, so it's, we wouldn't want it to get stuck. In fact, I believe when one of these landed, it did get stuck, but it was eventually able to figure itself out with the help of some humans on Earth, and so it could get unstuck. And I believe, I haven't read about these recently, but I think they were originally supposed to be there for just a short while, but they've outlasted their usefulness and they've been there, or outlasted their initial lifespan and they've been useful for a much longer period of time. I would think they'd have to have something like that for energy because any robot needs an energy source to, to, uh, um, to operate, so could well be. There are other things for work though. Um, Something that's kind of dangerous is having surgery, certain types of surgery. This happened to be from the Urbana paper. Well, it's getting to be two years ago now, but it's robot-assisted surgery. So it's not that the robot does all of it for you, for the doctor. The doctor has to be there, but it helps make it safer. Um, and so this is an example of a, a robot that can be used for surgery. Someone already mentioned in uh, industry, you can have welding robots. Sometimes that can be thought of as a, a dull task or a dirty task, and so a robot can do that. Sure. Yeah. And sometimes things on your cars are almost robotic-like, except that, does anybody have a car that, I was just, my dad was telling me about a car that he was looking at that can park itself. Have you seen one of those? Automatic parking car, yeah? It has sensors on it. There's some sort of a computer, so if you want a parallel park, you press a button and you take your hands off the wheel and the car will park itself. At least that's how he described it to me. I don't know. Probably better than he would park it. He's not a good parallel parker, so come it. Okay, so there's sensors in it to know when there's a crash. Same way for airbags, there's sensors for that. It can, probably kind of because it's, there's some sort of computer with there's sensors to know if, if your wheels are spinning and then there's a computer that makes a decision to, as to where to put the power in the wheels. Yeah, could be. And if you drift off into another lane, it wakes you up. Does it? I haven't heard about that one. That would be very helpful though. Yeah. Yep. The first robot? What was the first robot? Do we remember? We, we, in our class, we looked at sort of the history of some robots. The, the, the term robot was, was uh, invented fairly recently. I forget the exact year. 1950s, 40s, something like that. Probably seems like a long time ago for you, but fairly recent compared to other things. A um, few other things. Robots can do things that are dirty jobs around the house. This is a vacuum cleaner robot. Do any of you have a Roomba? 
Some people have had Roombas. What it does is you put it on the floor, and I don't have one, but I've been told that you put it on the floor, you get it started, it knows where the walls are, so it has sensors to know where the walls are. It'll go around the room, it'll vacuum your room, and then uh, it'll go back to its home base and it'll recharge itself. And so the next time you want to use it, it can go and vacuum the room, avoiding the tables and chairs and things like that, and then goes home and recharges it, charges itself. Okay. Okay. Yes. The, I think the company that makes the Roomba has, I forget, is it Scuba? And that is one to uh, clean your pool type of thing. Sort of a vacuum cleaner for your pool. Another comment. What does robot stand for? What does it stand for? That's a good question. It was invented by, I believe, a Czech playwright for a play uh, in the 40s or 50s, whenever it was. I could be off a little bit there. And I don't really know why he decided to name it that. That's a good question to investigate later. I don't know the answer to that. 